Welcome to a very special edition of Preservation Tours with our Restoration Nation, Lane and Kevin. We're so excited to have you here today because our friends here on YouTube have been asking for a before and after tour. They want to see one of our projects that we've actually completed. Well, because of time and distance and a number of home sales, really the only completed project we have to show you right now is our own home. So today we're going to be welcoming you into our private space, the space that we have restored to our standard and that is our little bit of respite from the matting crowd. This home was being sold as a teardown when we purchased it 10 years ago. It was priced at its land value and the house itself had basically been condemned. But we're big believers that there's no such thing as a teardown. So we looked at this 1909, originally folk Victorian beauty that in 1925 had been loaded up on logs and attached to a mule team and moved to this spot and remodeled as a craftsman and thought, we can save that house. So come on inside and see what we did. So why was this home being marketed as a teardown? Well, it had been completely neglected for about 70 years. When we bought the house, we had a foundation inspector crawl under the house to discover that the entire foundation had suffered from termite damage and dry rot. So our first repair that we did to this house was to jack it up and have an entirely new foundation placed underneath it. We were not allowed to come into the house and start any work until that was done. Once we were in the house, we found a dark, dingy, really depressing space, paneling on every wall, uh, nine foot ceilings that had been dropped, and in some places, acoustical tiles dropped down to eight feet, and we undertook the huge process of turning this back into a Victorian beauty. We're now in the entryway, and as you can see, this space that was once so depressing, so oppressive, is now light, bright, and airy. It's here that we found the fact that the ceilings were indeed 12 feet, not nine. In this corner, right here, Kevin was doing a small repair to the ceiling and discovered that the nine foot drop ceilings had been placed in 1925. And above that were three more feet of ceiling height for us. So we made the decision at that point to bring all of the ceilings in the house back up to their original 12 feet. This window of the bay had been enclosed and a room had been added onto the front porch. We took that room off and reopened so that we now have this beautiful three light bay window. So this is our living room. You can see that I filled it with treasures from around the world, things that make us feel at home and remind us that this is a place of peace and solace for us. I love to decorate my house with things that really make a statement about who we are as individuals and make a house feel like a home. I always hate to see people who live in their house prepping it for resale, leaving the walls empty with not anything on them, leaving the colors bland for fear that someday if they need to resell the house, they'd have to repaint it. That's what paint's for, it's okay. But you can see some of the most major changes that happened to the house in this room. As we started our restoration process, we discovered that most of the wood in the house, meaning the window surrounds, the baseboards, unfortunately the original flooring, had all been destroyed by termites. So as we started repairing and restoring, we realized we were going to have to replace the wood surrounds around the windows and around the doors. But what that gave us the opportunity to do was to go back to the original window surround. So the window and door surrounds that you see, the height of the baseboards, the profile of the crown molding and the picture rail, those were all determined from the ghosts of the originals that we found when we started peeling back the layers of paneling and exposing the original ceilings. 
So even if they're not the originals, they're very close facsimiles to what would have been here. We did decide to go with painted woodwork because from what we could tell from the doors and a few of the extant pieces of trim in the house, the woodwork here had always been painted. So we wanted to keep it as close to original as we could. In the living room, some things of note, the beautiful mantle and fireplace surround. The tiles and mantle are of the period, but they're not original to the house. This fireplace sadly had suffered from a 1950s makeover. So instead, we replaced them with tile from a mansion in Chicago, a fireplace from California, and one by six handcrafted tiles from an artisan in New York City. The pocket doors were one of our favorite discoveries. When we bought the house, this wall was completely enclosed, but we knew from its original 1909 period, there should be pocket doors separating the living room and dining room. The first time we were able to access the house safely, we poked a hole in this wall to see if in fact there were pocket doors. We found the hole, we found the pocket door slot, but no doors. A few days later, we were out in our garage, which sadly has since collapsed and been removed from the property, and we saw a wall that had shelving on it with oil cans stacked up. Kevin noticed that the shelving had beautiful raised panel details, and then we saw hardware and realized that our eight and a half foot solid wood pocket doors had been used in the garage to back oil can shelves. We brought them inside and had them refurbished, and now they hang in pride of place where they were meant to be. Unfortunately, since they had been used in a dirt floor garage for probably 70 years as a wall and they had sat on the wet earth floor, the bottom third of the door had rotted away. But we were able to restore the bottom panel, rehang them, and replace them where they're supposed to be. Through the pocket doors, off the living room, we have our dining room. It's the largest room in the house, which is funny because it's the room we use the least but it's still a grand space that we absolutely love. And in a grand space, you need a grand light fixture. So we have this gorgeous chandelier that really fills up this enormous space. But the chandelier is so large that when we brought it in the first time, it couldn't come through the front door. It had to come through this window here in the dining room. The windows are something we were able to retain. We have all of our original wavy glass windows throughout the house. We are passionate about saving old windows, just like we are about saving old homes and we're so proud that we were able to keep these beauties out of the landfill. This room is a gorgeous room done in monochromatic cornflower blue. We have artwork in here that is not your run-of-the-mill artwork. These are things that are treasures of use and beauty, hand-embroidered gentlemen's waistcoats that otherwise would be folded up and kept in a chest are proudly displayed as works of art here. A china cabinet full of my grandmother's china and a Christmas gift for my husband. A clock that doesn't keep time because it scares the dogs, but is lovely. And a glorious assortment of strawberry themed silver grace the dining room table. Well, here we are in one of the most controversial spaces in any historic home restoration, the kitchen. How do you put a 21st century kitchen in a 19th century home and have it not look completely out of place? We did our best. That's all I can tell you. This kitchen was actually added in 1925 during the craftsman period of this home. So we tried to stay with that iteration of the property. We kept the ceilings at 10 feet rather than going up to the original 12 and put a coffer ceiling in to keep the proportion of the space feeling cozy rather than swamping people who are in here. We use natural marble on the countertops because that's an authentic material to the period. The sink is original to the first kitchen of the house. We found it in a trash pile in the backyard. The walls are all done in subway tile, floor to ceiling. We have exposed cabinetry displaying some more of my antique china. And then this great dry sink featuring antique stoneware and a candy clock from France in the breakfast room. I love this center hallway. This is one of the most radically changed spaces in the house. You can see in these before pictures that when we bought this house, 
This had a drop ceiling, fluorescent lighting, and the staircase had been enclosed for some incredibly inexplicable reason. We came in and raised these ceilings back up and we opened the staircase back up. Now, sadly, the newel post and banister were gone, but we were able to salvage this beautiful set out of a mansion in St. Louis that had been demolished. And we think it fits in beautifully with the folk Victorian details that are original to this house. This house didn't have indoor plumbing until 1933, and the place that the bathroom had been situated was at the end of this center hallway. Always there should have been a front door and back door with a breezeway connecting the two, but when they put the bathroom in, they closed off the breezeway. Because we were in such a rush when we initially did this house, we too put a powder room at the end of the hall. So we've just completed moving that powder room and reopening the center hall breezeway. We love this space. We see hallways as another space to live, not just walk through space, but places to display art. This is where I put my collection of modern antique art. A place for a wonderful cabinet of curiosities full of mementos from trips at home and abroad. And a place where we actually spend time during our day. We don't just rescue houses, we also rescue dogs. And this is one of our rescue babies, Miss Sprite. She's a little camera shy. But we knew that we would be sharing this house, not just with one another, but with our rescue animals. So we did make some concessions in the design. Instead of doing a finish on the floor, we went with a very durable paint that's designed for saltwater boats. That enables our very large, very rambunctious dogs to live in this house without doing damage to the floors. This is our bedroom. This is the area of the house where we had the most structural compromise in the structure above the foundation. The entire west facing wall, this entire bay was completely compromised by water damage, which led to a termite infestation. That termite infestation had crept from the west wall down to the floor and all the way across the fireplace wall. The former owner had her bed in this room and underneath the carpets was a six by six hole with nothing but carpet, then dirt. It was purely miraculous that she did not find herself sleeping on a dirt floor one night. Once all of that structure was repaired, we've ended up with an absolutely stunning bedroom that we could not be more proud of. So this is our bathroom. It started its life as another bedroom, but the only access to it was the door behind me. So we had to make the decision, do we make this another bedroom and try to find access from the hall under the stairway or do we use it as our grand bathroom? So you can see which direction we went. The mantles in both the bedroom and the bathroom are not original to the house. They're marble and they're of the period, but they're not original because once we pulled off the original wood mantles that we had in both of these rooms, they were so infested with bugs that they literally just turned to dust in our hands. There was nothing left to salvage. So we went with something that's period appropriate, but impervious to insects. Other than that, we love this beautiful, glamorous, relaxing space that helps us start and end our day 
and peace. So I know the number one question we're going to get is, what's up the stairs? And sadly, it's just the attic, but come on up, we'll show you the attic. We have about 1,500 extra square feet up here altogether, and the plan is to eventually turn this into two bedrooms and a bathroom. But with all the houses we have on our plate right now, this is in last position. We hope you've enjoyed this look inside our home and our lives, the way that we live and the way that we enjoy our space. We hope maybe that it's inspired you to enjoy your space to its absolute fullest. And we really hope that it's proven that there is no such thing as a teardown when you're committed to preservation, restoration, and rehabilitation. We'll see you next time.